Hi, this is Ivan and welcome to the channel. Today what I'd like to do is introduce a series of videos that I'm going to do uh, regarding home simulation and pilot training. This is a question that comes up fairly frequently in the student pilot forums. I've also seen it in different flight simulator forums and that is can home flight simulators augment or enhance private pilot training or even beyond? And, and the answer is is just spoiler alert, it most definitely is yes, it can. Uh, the airlines use uh, flight simulators. Obviously, theirs are, are super high fidelity, quite expensive, and uh, completely different from what we might find in the home environment. But I think even in the home environment, and this is speaking from experience, I think home flight simulators are, in fact, uh, can be helpful and, and definitely enhance your training. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be an introduction video. It's going to be fairly brief. And then I'm going to do a series of videos. They will also be brief on different components of how or different areas rather of how a home flight simulator can uh, help your training. And these this series will cover different topics such as maneuvers. that would be like takeoffs and landings things like that, uh, checklist and procedures. These can be trained on a home flight simulator. Certainly navigation, and that would include GPS, VOR, pilotage versus dead reckoning, uh, and uh, certain hardware such as the Garmin units, the G1000, maybe the GNS 430 and 530. And certainly we can discuss how... Uh, Flight simulators can be used to have different approximations of steam gauges and analog gauges. So we'll cover that too in a future video. Um, this would be useful, for example, in just how to scan your instrument panel. And of course, my favorite area when it comes to home simulation as it relates to pilot training would be um, ATC and comms using such services as VATSIM or Pilot Edge. So those videos are, to, are in the future and I'll be putting those out uh, as time goes on. They'll be brief and we'll just kind of touch base on them. This particular video, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, home flight sims and different types of flight simulators. And again, just kind of the basics, especially as it relates to private pilot training or other training as well. So what kind of flight simulator types are there? Well, there's the FAA certified, we'll kind of have two different groups, FAA certified and then the rest. So FAA certified, basically there's different uh, levels of certification, but I'm going to limit this to basic and advanced. And these are the type of simulators that you can use. They're typically at flight schools. I, I guess some people could own them as well in their house. But uh, the idea is that you can get actual time logged in that will count in a logbook. Um, particularly in IFR training. That's not necessarily private pilot training, but in uh, instrument flight rules training, certainly there is an allowance for, in fact, it's quite a significant amount of time that's allowed in a flight simulator. And the benefit of this, of course, would be usually renting an FAA approved flight simulator is cheaper than using, uh, than, than renting a plane and, and, and that kind of thing. So then that begs the question, well, what good would a home flight simulator be if you can't count the hours? And that's a fair question, um, and I don't think it's unreasonable to ask. But having said that, it's still time that you can practice on things, get an idea of what things are about, and maybe decrease the need for uh, actual paid flight time. So, you know, you need... A certain number of hours to pass. Most people take more than that. Maybe this would be an approach to help you decrease the amount of hours needed to be ready for your check run. So when we talk about home flight simulators, I'm kind of, there's a, there's a wide variety of these. And some are very simple, very generic. It could be as simple as a joystick and a set of pedals or a joystick and a keyboard. But generally speaking, I'm uh, speaking of uh, a yoke, some type of throttle, some type of pedals. That's kind of, to me, the, the minimum level of, of, uh, of a home sim. And many of these setups are quite generic, meaning that you're not 
pigeonholing yourself into one type of airplane. Um, so then that would bring the next step up would be more specific to where maybe uh, instead of a, a yoke, you have some type of joystick and or, or something else that would, again, you're, you're kind of making your flight simulator more specific to a, a certain model of aircraft, whether it's a home-built uh, panel or using a uh, software like Air Manager to approximate a certain plane, but you're doing things to make your home simulator more specific. And then, of course, the 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 third category of home flight simulators would be high fidelity. And there are high fidelity uh, home simulators. All you got to do is Google home simulators, flight simulators, and there are some extraordinary home simulators that people have put a lot of time, um, effort, and money into. And I, I can think of off the top of my head where I've seen some YouTubers out there and some home flight sim builders that have really gone out of their way to say maybe have a Cessna or a, a Cirrus. Um, and certainly we've all seen some of the amazing, uh, you know, airliners that people are building, the Boeings and, and, and uh, the like. So again, quite a range of home simulators. These aren't FAA certified, but they're still quite complex and can be have significant or what we would say high fidelity in terms of the simulator itself. Um, so what do you need? What do we need for a, a home simulator? Well, certainly you're going to need software. This can be a controversial topic, and I am going to discuss this in the future videos, but the big players, of course, would be X-Plane, uh, currently, the version is 11 with 12 in beta, but I believe it's about to be released if it hasn't already in, in terms of the full product, X-Plane 12. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course, would be another big one. And there's others as well. People are still using prepared, uh, you know, Lockheed Martin's uh, Flight Simulator. And uh, there are people out there still using uh, FSX. They have put in a lot of time and money and in terms of their scenery and their third-party aircraft. And so they're still totally viable uh, flight simulators, especially when we're talking about using this to augment uh, pilot training as a, as a student pilot. Um, some of these seem to do better job than others when it comes to flight physics. And boy, that's, that's a hot topic and, and very debatable. But let's talk a little bit about what flight physics are and why is that important in a uh, home simulator used for flight training? Well, that's going to be basically, certainly in a, in a home simulator, uh, even if you have one of those kind of chairs that move around, that's still, you're just tilting. You're not really feeling the effects of gravity pull you into the seat. And so what what is changing when you meet, when you apply some type of input, whether it's forward on the yoke or pulling on the yoke or, uh, you know, increasing flaps, things like that is the actual video screen is going to change. Um, it's going to show the plane pitching up or banking or yawing or rolling. And that's going to change what you're seeing on the monitor. And that's your sight picture. And sight picture is important uh, in pilot training and student pilot training. You, you certainly can learn to land a plane and after a while, you do develop a sense of, or a sight picture of what your mind is used to seeing. Sight picture and, in fact, muscle memory. And you may be used to pulling X amount on a yoke or throttle or applying pressure in a certain direction and seeing a certain change through your, you know, forward window. Um, and if you're, and that would apply to flight simulators as well. So there is a certain amount, and that's the, that's the limit really of flight physics in a typical home simulator. You're just changing what you see on your monitor, and that should have some type of correlation to the, what input you've put into it, or automatic input by the simulator itself in terms of wind and weather and those kind of things. Um, so what other, is there other equipment? Well, certainly there's additional software out there. Um, the, the one that comes to mind for me would be Air Manager. There are other companies that have uh, additional instruments and, and panel building uh, capabilities uh, when it comes to, you know, 
G1000s and things like that. And sometimes it's a combination of software and hardware. Here I'm thinking of like Real Sim Gear and their excellent line of G1000 uh, based products. And certainly they have different panel components and, and I've seen some really nice setups. I've never actually used that gear, but it looks it looks wonderful. You've got the actual physical bezels with the knobs that are pretty, uh, that seem to be pretty accurate in terms of how they feel. Of course, the actual G1000 functionality is not built into that hardware that's provided by the flight simulator uh, software that you use with Microsoft Flight Simulator in X-Plane. Um, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator's G1000 is, is making a lot of progress. They've uh, they're using a third party to develop their G1000 and it seems to be coming along quite well. Um, different hardware types. This is a pretty wide variety of hardware out there. There's different yokes from the very cheap to the very expensive. There's yokes out there that have force feedback. I can't speak to how uh, that is supported by the different flight simulators, but I know it is to some extent. Um, those can be quite expensive though. Uh, you know, the honeycomb units right now seem to be very popular. There's Logitech, SciTech units. There's, uh, you know, other uh, companies that are making this hardware, and there's a pretty wide variety. Some that's very, you know, seems robust, metal construction. Others more plastic. And, you know, and, and the price range is, is considerable. Um, and so that brings us to too expense. Is it, is it worth it? I mean, it, it, you can spend a lot of money on a home simulator uh, setup, which would include the computer. And some of these more modern flight simulators, uh, particularly X-Plane and, and Microsoft, uh, they require a pretty robust machine, fairly modern. You can turn the settings down, which is absolutely fine. And you can probably get a pretty decent amount of mileage out of a, out of an older machine. But really, uh, these uh, software packages are, are designed, or, or you know, basically, will will be better utilized with with higher performing gear. And again, that's just the computer. And you can spend a lot of money on just the computer. That would include the monitor, the video graphic card, and that's been a nightmare over the past two or three years from the from the pandemic. Uh, those prices are starting to normalize, but now there's a new generation of cards coming out and those prices may kind of creep up again. So regardless to say a decent machine is gonna cost a significant amount of money, the software then is an additional expense. And so that's a pretty good amount of money. And so, uh, you know, but at the same time, if this is, decreasing your amount of hours needed to get your, your private pilot license, um, that's certainly uh, a consideration that may mitigate some of that cost. The other part of this is uh, I am just starting my IFR training myself, and there is a lot uh, to be said for using home simulators for some IFR training, especially with VATSIM and Pilot Edge. So those are all the more or less the, the pros of, 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 you know, at least in my opinion, of why a flight, a home flight simulator may be useful in your pilot training. I do think it's act very uh, helpful and beneficial. My uh, CFI noted that I very instinctively was doing some things right in my first couple of lessons, and those were all muscle memory items from using a, a home flight sim. I actually started out on a flight simulator first. In fact, that's what inspired me to go out and pursue getting my PPL. Um, but are there cons? Yes, there are cons. Um, you could make an argument that if your flight simulator is giving you weird sight pictures and you, and you can't do certain things and there's not a good translation of what you're doing on a yoke or a throttle, then that may cause uh, muscle memory, muscle confusion when you get uh, in a actual in an actual plane. And that may, you know, especially in the beginning when you don't have a lot of hours in and this is all new to you, 
I, I think you could make an argument that this could, in fact, uh, cause you to 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 get some things wrong and and maybe even set you back. That is a possibility. I think it's going to depend on the individual person, and I think it's going to depend on the amount of time you're putting in on either the actual training or the simulated uh, training. But I do think that's an actual consideration. Now, if you're the type of student pilot that maybe you're not training, like, for example, I trained in 95% one plane, which was a, a 172. I There was a, an additional Cessna 172 that I trained in, and it didn't seem to feel like the main one. They were identical except... Uh, one was a G1000, one was uh, standard analog gauges, but they were both 180 horsepower, fuel injected, uh, you know, and they should have felt the same, but to me, they felt a little bit different. And then the third plane I did train in for a, a few flights was a, a Skycatcher 162, which was completely different from flying a, a 172. Very, very dissimilar experience. So if you're the type of student that you're, training in a bunch of different planes, uh, you know, a flight sim may just be one more type of uh, thing to get used to, and it may not be bothersome to you. You may be used to it. So in that case, the uh, confusing your muscle memory, that kind of thing may be mitigated by students that train in more than one plane. Cost. Um, I'd already touched on it a little bit as a, you know, it, it could be considered a con. Uh, that is for sure. But I would say this, uh, in my flight training, I was canceled frequently. I'd set up a basic schedule. I tried to fly at least twice a week. And very often here in Kansas, too windy, uh, low visibility sometimes, um, you know, maintenance. I was canceled quite frequently. And there were times when my two days a week went down to one day a week or sometimes no days a week. Well, you figure two hours worth of training at roughly um, $200 an hour. So you miss out on, a, on, a, on flight training. Well, then that's $400 that you didn't spend. And so I could go home and um, spend some time on my flight simulator well, now that's, I mean, I guess it's, it's, it's $400 that I saved from not flying. And so did that kind of, could I, in theory, pretend like I, I, I'm, I'm using that as savings and that it kind of makes it okay? I don't know. That's, that's a tricky one. But there were plenty of cancellations that I, you know, would have had to pay the money for. I didn't. And being able to go home and do something in my flight simulator was quite beneficial. So anyway, I hope that you guys will join me on these future videos that are coming out related to this. I think that given how often I see this question, there is some debate. There's absolutely some date, debate about it. But maybe I can uh, put some information out there that may help somebody decide if it's worthwhile pursuing uh, building a home flight simulator to augment and enhance their private pilot training. If you guys have any questions about this or if there's a specific element of flight training as it relates to home simulator, especially VFR, which is what my experience is with. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fresh new IFR student, so I can't speak to that just yet. Hopefully, the more I progress, the more I will be able to give some uh, more intelligent, uh, uh, informed opinion on but if you have an, uh, some kind of question that you would like for me to address, please put it down and either I'll address it in the comments if I can, or maybe even that may be inspiration for another video if it's a, a big enough topic or enough people ask the same question. In any case, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon.